Hi, my name is Joris van den Potsen, and in this presentation I will give a few highlights of what's new and what's coming in Pandas Anno 2020. The slides were created together with Tom Augsburg, and they will also be available for questions. We are both maintainers of Pandas, a Python package providing one of the fundamental building blocks for working with tabular data, or data frames in Python. So, one of the uh, major milestones of this year is that we finally had a 1.0 release uh, in January of this year. In itself, this 1.0 was not a very special release in terms of, of big new features, for example. But mainly, it was high time to finally have uh, such a 1.0 release. And even though we now have that release, there is still a lot of development going on with lots of bug fixes, improvements, and new features in the latest, latest releases. And also, we are working on some beer experimental changes. So way too many uh, changes to uh, all talk about here. Um, so for this talk, I picked one new feature to highlight, uh, which is a better integration uh, with Numba. After that, I will explain uh, two data type related experimental changes uh, that are on the roadmap and that we are working on, new string data type and work related to uh, missing data. But first, uh, a few slides with some other uh, project updates. So we have an active community uh, with a growing user base and many people uh, are also contributing to Pandas. Uh, so for example, the, the last year we had more than 50 regular contributors. Uh, and we recently also expanded the core team. It's very nice to see such a, an active community. Uh, of course, that also brings uh, challenges with keeping up with the changes and pull request and all the maintenance works, work uh, that is involved. Now, this year, for the first time, uh, we had uh, some significant funding from the CZI Open Source uh, Initiative. And this way, we were able to compensate a little bit of the maintenance work uh, involved in Pandas. For example, uh, Simon Hawkins has been doing the release management for the latest releases. Um, and he was, uh, uh, be able to, he was able to do that uh, on this grant. We also use the grant to fund some specific feature development related to string uh, data. and which is a topic I will come back uh, to later in the presentation. I also want to mention uh, the new focus small development grants, uh, which helps uh, financing some specific uh, projects. We also have a new logo. Uh, it's actually not news of this year, but from last year, that thought it's still worth uh, mentioning. Big thanks to Mark Garcia here to lead this effort and to uh, indeed for sponsoring and to work on this. We also have been working on an improved documentation team um, and a new Getting Started guide sponsored by New Focus. Um, we're very happy that other projects also start uh, picking up the new Sphinx team. Uh, the slide um, shows the Jupyter Hub docs and uh, Jupyter Book. Uh, but for example, um, also NumPy started using the team uh, recently. So it's, it's great to see uh, some collaboration on this uh, effort. But um, let's now go to the more interesting part of this uh, presentation, a few demos. In the first demo, I want to showcase uh, one of the new features of Pandas 1.0 which is a better integration with Numba for moving window and Kupai uh, operations. But for the demo, uh, let's switch to uh, a notebook. Um, and so I will show here uh, functionality related to moving window operations, which was added in 1.0, and later it was expanded to uh, Kupai operations in the 1.1 uh, release. But let's first uh, show a small example of such a rolling or moving window operation. So I'm creating here a series uh, with some random 
uh, data. And Pandas provides the functionality to um, compute a moving window or rolling uh, aggregation. In this case, I'm using uh, the uh, mean function to calculate the average for each window of 10 uh, rows. And it's actually quite fast for and this million uh, points. And those built-in functions, uh, they are implemented in Pandas uh, in an optimized uh, way. So in general, it's always advisable that uh, try to use one of those uh, built-in uh, functions, like the mean in this case, uh, but the typical uh, reductions are uh, implemented. Now, in some cases, it might not be possible to uh, put uh, to express the operation you want uh, in one of those uh, built-in uh, functions. And in those cases, um, you can write your own function with your custom logic and apply uh, this in the rolling operation. So a small example here, I define my user-defined function. In this case, I'm just using, again, the mean and to be able to compare it to my example above. But of course, in practice, you should only uh, write your own custom function if you have more uh, special uh, logic in there. Um, but let's um, apply it, uh, apply this rolling, uh, this user-defined function in my rolling operation. Small note, I'm using raw equals true here to ensure to pass numpy arrays uh, to my function and not, um, and not pandas uh, series objects. So you can see exactly the same operation, but uh, much slower. So seven seconds compared to 25 milliseconds. Um, so that's the reason that in general you should use, uh, try to use those built-in uh, functions as they are much faster than applying a custom function. But in cases where it's not possible, uh, that's where the new feature of using Numba comes into the picture. Um, so Numba is a just-in-time compiler for Python code and especially well suited uh, to speed up numerical algorithms and uh, working with arrays of data and computing uh, on that. And Pandas now provides a way to use Numba or, and, and to just-in-time compile uh, functions using Numba um, in moving window or group by uh, operations. And that can uh, make, um, yeah, applying this function much faster. The first time you see it's not, hey, it's, it's already faster, but not that much faster. Because the first time you do it, uh, there is some overhead in com uh, just in time compiling uh, the, function, the function. So it's mostly useful uh, if you want to apply the same function multiple uh, times. So doing it uh, again here, and you can see now it's actually much faster. And so we're coming from seven seconds down to, um, yeah, around 180 uh, milliseconds. You can see it's still a bit slower than the built-in sum that originally was 25 milliseconds. But and for the cases where you need a custom logic in a user-defined function, um, using the Numba engine can provide a very nice uh, speed up. So that was a first demo showing some new features. Now I would like to move to explaining some of the um, experimental changes we are doing in Pandas. And the first topic here is uh, about working with string data and how we're trying to improve working with string data. I will again uh, go to a notebook, a new notebook for uh, string data. And to explain this, let's first take a step back and look at the current uh, situation. For that, I'm um, reading some data, Titanic data sets. I have a data frame now, and you see different columns with different data types, and including a few columns that have string data in it. For example, here, the name uh, column. So um, we can inspect the data types. Um, and if you're looking at that, and you see here, object D-type. It's, yeah, I think a typical case when explaining to 
uh, new users how uh, data types work in uh, pandas.ia. This object detail that typically means that you have uh, string data. So um, if you have string data, you are sure that you have an object type, but it's not because you have an object type that it means that it are string data. So it's not guaranteed to be string data. It can also be any other Python object or uh, some error that uh, numbers ended up in an object type uh, column. So uh, this gives a uh, yeah, not very good user experience um, for this. And it's not a, a clear data type. There is no guarantee. Uh, so it's not very a nice user experience. And that's something that you're uh, trying to improve by um, introducing uh, a dedicated string data type. It's something that was added uh, to Pandas in uh, the 1.0 uh, 1 release. Um, and uh, to show this, let's convert the previous data frame using a helper method to convert some data types but just focusing on string uh, data for now to a new uh, data frame. And let's again take a look at the uh, data types. And you can see now we actually have string data. It indicates here that we have a string uh, data type. So uh, already giving uh, a much clearer uh, message about the data types of your data frame. Um, I can create such a series uh, manually as well, indicating here that I want a string data type. Um, I can, for example, set um, some data, but in addition to it being now an actual string data type, it also means that we can be strict about it. And unlike object data type, which can, which can contain anything, uh, now it's only allowed to contain strings. So if I want to put here some number in my series to actually give an error because you can't put a float in a string uh, data type. Now, under the hood, it's still using uh, an object dtype numpy array with Python strings as before. Um, so the implementation is very similar as but is now being used with uh, for object D-type, but at least the intent is already much cleaner. Um, and because we are using uh, those Python objects for uh, the individual strings, it's, um, it's actually quite difficult to write optimas, optimized and fast algorithms uh, working on those strings. And to improve on this aspect as well, so the aspect of performance, um, we are looking into uh, leveraging Apache Arrow uh, to improve this aspect. So that brings me to a second part of this notebook. Um, and to be clear, uh, this part is not yet released. It's not even in a development uh, version. Uh, it's still a uh, work in progress in a pull request uh, on GitHub. Um, what is it about? So it's using Apache Arrow. Um, and to give some background here, Apache Arrow is, um, is a project that tries to define a standard uh, cross-language memory representation for tabular data. And in addition, it also provides uh, libraries in, in several uh, languages uh, that implements this standard and also provides functionality to work on such uh, data. And that's what we will be leveraging here under the hood in Pandas. So we want to use the memory representation and the algorithms of Apache Arrow under the hood uh, in Pandas when you have string data. To um, show this, I created some, um, some random data, a bigger data set with uh, strings in it. Uh, so there are some random strings. I extract this series and I convert it to um, the string data type that I just explained uh, above. So using the NumPy object array uh, approach. After that, um, I will now also create a version of this series using the arrow 
uh, string data type. Um, to be clear, what you see here uh, is not the final API, how it will look like for the user. Uh, it's just the, the temporary development uh, version. But you see that now my series here still has string data, but it's now using Apache Arrow on the tools. So what are the reasons that we want to use Apache Arrow? So the first reason is uh, the memory uh, usage. Um, so if we compare the memory usage of my Python strings versus the um, arrow strings, you can see that um, the series with backed by arrow memory is using a, a quite a bit less memory. The exact uh, ratio between the two will depend on your, on your data. Uh, typically, if you have longer string data, the, the difference will, will be smaller. Um, but so what's the reason for this difference is um, that the um, in the Python series, so in the first case, uh, each string is stored uh, in a Python object, um, which has some overhead, uh, while in uh, the arrow memory, all the string data are stored in one contiguous array of, of, uh, of characters. And uh, we then also store, in Apache Arrow stores, then also the, the indices pointing at where the individual strings uh, start. By having this um, more efficient memory representation, it's not only uh, uh, using less memory, but it's also more efficient to write optimized algorithms working on those data. And let's uh, show um, some examples here um, as well. Um, the first example um, is uh, converting to lowercase. Uh, so all, converting all strings to lowercase. So you can see that uh, um, with the uh, arrow version, we get a, a nice speed up for this kind of uh, operation. Um, another example, just uh, checking if something is equal to uh, a certain uh, value. And also here, uh, you will see that uh, the arrow version uh, is quite a bit uh, faster. And final example, also uh, a contains uh, operation. So it's a, it's a match of substring, so um, checking for each of the strings in the uh, series whether the A1 uh, string is uh, somewhere present in as a substring of the, the full uh, string. And also here, uh, you see a nice uh, speed up. Um, and just as a sanity check to ensure that I am not lying here, but the, the two versions actually uh, return the same result, you can check here that indeed uh, they are giving the same uh, result. So how does this work? Um, as I already explained, the Apache Arrow has an efficient memory representation, uh, specifically for uh, those variable size strings, uh, storing them all together so we can write efficient algorithms. In Pandas, we can then use this under the hood. In the example here, it was still explicit, but in the, in the future, when it's actually uh, released, we will ensure that there is uh, an option to use it and then uh, that it's used by default when creating um, strings. One thing to note is that not everything will be more efficient. Uh, because it's stored in one contiguous array, um, operations where you, for example, want to uh, modify one element somewhere in the middle of your array, that's an example of an operation that will be uh, less efficient. Uh, with this version. As a final note for this notebook, um, I want to thank the CCI for uh, funding this work. Um, using the, the, the grant, uh, Martin Bredos, uh, Bredos was able to um, work on some of the algorithms on the uh, Apache Arrow site, and we have been uh, with uh, several people uh, working on the, um, on the Panda site to integrate it into the internals of the string uh, data type. 
So that was about uh, ongoing work on the string uh, data type. Um, and again, so the, the actual string data type, so the first part that I showed, is already uh, available in a released version. The, uh, the fact that it can be backed by Apache Arrow, that's work uh, in progress. But so, let's move to a second topic from our uh, roadmap. Um, and that's about missing data. So we are working on um, improving the experience around missing values in Pandas. And let's again first take uh, a look at the current situation for some uh, context. Opening my uh, third notebook. Um, so for this, I'm creating here a small dummy uh, data frame uh, with uh, columns of uh, using different data types. So I have a data frame with uh, some integer data, with flow data, Boolean, string, and timestamps. Um, if I look at the data types, um, there are a few things that you can notice. Um, so first thing, and something uh, probably most of you will be aware of, that if you have integer data, but also missing values, that uh, it gets cast to, um, to float data type. So you can't store uh, integer data with missing values currently in Pandas. That's for integer data, but also for Boolean data, um, it, it can't natively store uh, missing data. So here, uh, for missing data, um, for Boolean data, it gets uh, cast to an uh, object t-type. In addition to this uh, variable support across data types, you can also notice that there are different um, indicators for the missing uh, data that is being used. So for those two columns, you see here uh, none, so which stands for not a number, right? it's a floating point value. <coughs> For the Boolean and string data, uh, we're actually using none here, uh, but it could also be uh, none. Um, and in the timestamp data, uh, then there is yet another um, indicator, NAT, for not a time. Um, so uh, this is a quite, yeah, um, I would say a bit of a messy situation. Uh, not all data types support it different uh, indicators. So that's uh, the reason why we're trying to improve um, this uh, situation. Therefore, we are working on new, uh, what we call nullable d-types. Um, and the um, 1.0 release uh, of this year introduced a new indicator at the pd.na missing value indicator. Um, so to replace uh, mp.nan and non or nat as uh, missing value sentinel. Um, and it also introduced a few data types that are already uh, started using this. So we have a nullable integer Boolean and string uh, data type in 1.0 in uh, the upcoming uh, Pandas 1.2 release to also uh, be supported for uh, floating uh, data. Let's again look at um, the previous data frame, but now converted to uh, the new data types. So the convert dtypes method is a small helper method to convert um, the columns of a data frame to uh, same data, but using the uh, new data types. So if you look at this uh, column, so the, the first thing you can notice here eh, that now um, all of those columns are using the same indicator for uh, having missing data. The timestamp column not yet, so that's something we still have to do uh, in the future. Uh, but for those columns, it's already this pd.na. So that's uh, a new uh, a new object that was introduced in Pandas 1.0. Um, and so it's used as the um, indicator for uh, missing data. It stands for not available. It's the same 
terminology as I use in R, for example, and it's similar to the null from uh, SQL. Um, then if you look at uh, the data types of my data frame here, you can now see that um, it's my column with integers is now actually uh, indicating that it's using an, it's an integer data type. Um, the same for my Boolean column, it's now indicated it are actually bools and not and this object D type. Um, and it's also using the, the string data type. So the, um, the string data type that I introduced in the previous notebook is also using uh, this pd.na as, as its uh, missing value uh, indicator. Um, one note here, you will see here the uh, the in 64 with the capital. So that's a bit uh, a, a tricky uh, thing, but to um, differentiate from the NumPy D type, which doesn't support missing uh, values for integers, uh, we're using here uh, the form with a capital. Um, so for those data types where it would otherwise overlap with uh, a NumPy uh, D type. Um, so, in general, those new uh, nullable D types, uh, if you have columns with those D types uh, using pd.na, it will work similarly as uh, before if you used uh, none for flow data or, uh, or with object D type. Uh, so, all the functions specific to uh, missing data will work. Uh, as expected uh, with it. So things like fill an A, is an A, not an A, drop an A, uh, those uh, functions, they will all work with um, those noble D types as well. There are, however, a few um, differences in behavior that are worth uh, noting compared to uh, the, the current behavior when using none or uh, none as missing uh, value indicator. So um, to show that, I'm creating two small uh, series. Um, so one using pd.na and the new nullable interior data type. Uh, and another, the current default, uh, so which uh, the interiors gets uh, cast to uh, float data. First, um, when doing reductions, like uh, taking the sum, that's still the same as before. Um, by default, uh, they, are, they are skipped, uh, but you can always indicate that you don't want to skip and then it uh, propagates. So that's uh, something that um, um, is still working the same as it uh, did before. Also, for um, element wise arithmetic operations, um, again, it's um, exactly the same as before. So missing values in um, in the input uh, will get propagated to the output. Um, however, when uh, looking at comparison operations, so uh, equal or larger or lesser than, uh, this kind of operations there, it will also propagate. Um, if you ask for in my series whether it's equal to one, my a second element was a missing value in the input, and it will also be one in the output because we don't know whether this missing value was equal to one or not. And since we don't know, we keep it as a missing value in the output. And that's uh, different than uh, the behavior that uh, you currently get uh, when using none as a missing value uh, indicator. There, all comparisons with none always uh, so none is never equal to some other value or to itself. Um, so you get here, in this case, a false. In addition, um, for logical operations, there is also uh, some different uh, behavior. For example, uh, for the end operation, so if you do NA and true, um, the result depends on uh, whether this what the exact value of this NA is. So we don't know the result, so the NA here is propagated. Uh, and we get NA as a result. 
On the other hand, if you do the same but with an OR operation, NA or true, regardless of the actual value of this NA, whether it's true or false, because we already have a true on the right side of this operation, we know that the result will always be true. So in this case, we don't propagate uh, DNA, uh, but actually return true. Um, so that were a few examples of uh, behavior of this new NA uh, value. How does this work in practice? Um, for the uh, numeric ones, we are using a mask array approach. Um, we're not using the, the NumPy uh, implementation of this, but our own, but the concept is very similar. Um, so we have one array of the actual data. In addition, a separate uh, array indicating uh, for each of the values whether they are missing uh, or not. It's experimental, so meaning uh, there is still a lot of work. We need to expand it to more data types uh, to ensure that it's uh, fully supported in, in, in full of, of pandas, but uh, the end goal is certainly to uh, complete this work that they can become uh, the default. I have to repeat Again, this is experimental, and so it's certainly not um, recommended to use this in uh, production code. Now, that said, um, we actually want that those end data types become the default at some point um, in Pandas, and thus and the more people trying it out, uh, the faster we might uh, get there. So um, any contribution, whether it's in time, uh, trying it out and providing feedback or actually working on, on the code, doing some improvements, uh, sponsoring uh, is, is all very welcome uh, to speed up uh, the implementation. So that was the, the last demo uh, for this talk. Um, I hope that um, I could show some of the ongoing uh, developments in Pandas and some change that I'm uh, excited about uh, myself. Um, and as a final note, I want to thank the, uh, the Pandas community uh, for their efforts uh, contributing in all kinds of ways to, uh, to the Pandas project. And because what I presented here in this talk is not my own work, uh, but it's actually work of the, of the full uh, community. 